everyone. It's Melanie here with Vintage Hill Studio. Let's go on an adventure together. I'm going to be creating this Dots art card today. I have seen this done on canvases and rocks and I thought why wouldn't this work as well on a card? So if you're feeling adventurous, let's jump on this bandwagon together today. I'm using this Inka Dinka Do uh, stamp set as well as these Folk Art Dots Paints. I found these at Walmart. It was like $13, I think. You get six different colors here. This is an acrylic paint. It does have a very fine nozzle, and I guess the consistency is just what you need for dot art. I don't know. Like I said, I've never done this before, so welcome aboard on this crazy adventure with me today. Okay, you can see this, they've got some examples there. This is acrylic. You can paint on uh, clay pottery. It is for indoor and outdoor. You can paint on plates and heat it in the oven and evidently it will make it permanent. So there are lots of options for using this Folk Art Dots paint. Now back to my stamp set. I'm moving this around on my black cardstock mat that I've cut down here. And I'm going to place that in my mini Misty and then bring over this pigment ink pad in white. I just want a very faint impression. I don't want it to overtake the black cardstock or actually show up behind my dot painting today. So I'm going for a very light impression. The mini Misty comes in handy if you, or any stamping platform for that matter, if you need to restamp. So you can see the magnet holds my little cardstock mat in place and I can stamp this a couple of times and my cardstock's not going to move on me, which is very handy. Again, I'm not pressing down very hard because I do want a very light stamped image, just enough for me to see to do my dot art. Okay, so here we go. I'm opening up this up. Not only were they shrink wrapped together, look at these beautiful colors by the way, but they also had this little cellophane around the top and it does say to shake the paint. So I'm going to give this a go, pull off the cap and guess what? There was an inner liner as well and it's actually stuck in the cap. So I have to bring over my tweezers here and pull this out and I'm going to discard it. And I thought this was very funny. It says sealed for your uh, safety. Now, what are they saving us from here? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how this could be dangerous for me. It was already shrink wrapped and then also sealed around the outside and sealed on the outs inside. So just so you know, you're safe, I guess, in case that matters with your painting. Okay, then I'm just going to try practice a few dots on the scrap piece of paper. And you can see I could get big dots and smaller dots depending on the amount of pressure that I am using to squeeze out the paint and then also dab it on my paper. Now it does say to shake these up, so you want to shake your paints before you start. And then let's just go right on over to the paper and give it a try. Now I'm using a very light hand here because I'm trying to get some very fine dots. I guess, you know, I could have chosen something that had a bigger print, but no, why not go for the whole challenge and get a stamp that has very tiny details in it. I'm undeterred. I'm going to try it anyway. And if I got a little too close with my dots, I'll just take my little ball stylus and tap that off on my paper. All right, I can see this is going to be kind of fun. So let's get going here. I'm just going to be using these three colors as kind of an aqua this beautiful royal blue and then a lime green and I think they look beautiful together and then at the very last I'll bring over some white just to uh, center up my flowers so again I have this very small ball stylus I thought I would pull out this aqua color on the biggest flower and yes that's the biggest flower and it's tiny so let's get going on our other ones I'm going to speed this up quite a bit and we'll go through and do our little flowers. I'm doing about five dots on each flower. I thought this time I'll start at the middle and just take my time. And again, I'm using very, very light pressure with the nozzle of the bottle. That is not all that difficult. I won't say this was therapeutic for me because I didn't know what I was doing at the time. 
but it could be fun when you get used to using it. Okay, now I'm not going to make you sit through this whole video watching everything. I just wanted to give you an idea of how I was constructing this card with this dot paint. And then I'll skip forward as I start changing color so you don't have to sit through this whole thing. Just get all of my basic flowers put in and then I'm going to move back to that royal blue color. Again, I'm always starting on my scrap piece of paper just to make sure, you know, that it's not going to come out a big blob from that nozzle onto my project. So that works out pretty well with going with the scrap paper first and then moving over to the project. See how I can do these tiny little dots just with very little pressure right out of the bottle. And then also, if you want to try something else, go with some smaller styluses, like this wooden handled one has a very small head on the end of, there's two of them, a larger and a smaller end. And I'm going to actually go to my acrylic block, add some paint there, and then go over with my stylus and see how that's going to work by using my scrap paper. So using this very, very tiny end, I'm going to start putting in the stems all these curly Q stems here. And you can see I can get a very, very light impression with that small stylus going from the stamping block right onto the paper. And then I needed a different color, so I'm just going to mix a little bit of this blue with that lime green. And you can see I've got a variation, but it still goes with the colors that I am trying to stay with on this card. Again, using that very tiny end of my stylus and just adding a little variation on these swirly, curly Q, vine looking things. And because I am using very little paint, it actually dries pretty quickly. So the bottle and the packaging says to give it an hour to fully dry. And I didn't need to do that because my paint is not that thick and it is teeny tiny little dots. So that worked out for me. I guess you could actually freehand some of your own design, but since I haven't worked with this foot before and I had some stamps that lended itself, lended themselves very well to this dot art, I thought I'd just try this method. And I haven't ever seen these done on cards, so hey, maybe this is a new thing for, that you might want to try as well. Almost finished up here. This actually goes pretty quickly once you get the hang of it, and I think if you learn how to load up your stylus, you can see how many dots you can get without having to reload with paint. So just trial and error, more or less, at least for me. And then I just <clears throat> use this Make-A-Wish cut out from my Sizzix die cuts and finished up my card. Hey, I am so happy you dropped by to visit today. Maybe you'll get a little inspired to give dot art a try in whatever format you choose to do. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you again next week. And feel free to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Happy crafting, everyone!